What's good, Eagles fans? This is your boy, Tony DeShields II. And y'all are tuning to your dose of Chalk It Up, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And on top of that, please go check out the Chalk It Up merch shop as well. The links are available down below in the description if you want to support the channel. Because without you guys, the channel is powerless. Without you guys, the channel is nothing. And I want to keep on growing with you guys. And I'm so grateful for the support that you guys have always given me and already given me in the past. But let's hop right into the content. There is a such thing as being too hands-on. When you're the CEO of a company, when you're the big wig within a large corporation, when you run a business, you're only as good as the people around you. You're only as good as the people you put in positions of power. Your business can only grow as far as your team will allow it to go. When you think about the organization like the Philadelphia Eagles, two names come to mind, and that's Jeffrey Lurie and Harry Roseman. The reason those, those names come to mind is because they're the, they're the ones who are essentially running the show. But when you bring in your head coach, you're trusting him to not only develop the talent that you've put in place, but you're also trusting him to make significant in-game decisions. You're trusting him to make significant roster decisions. You're trusting him to essentially bring your team from the dirt all the way to the throne. But the Eagles organization didn't necessarily do that. They didn't necessarily trust Doug Peterson as far as they could throw him. Now, granted, Doug Peterson was able to secure a Super Bowl for the, city, for the city of Philadelphia. You know, with the help of Frank Reich, you know, Jim Schwartz, uh, Nick Foles, so many other catalysts, so many other inner workings that allowed that Super Bowl to happen. You know, the moves Howie Roseman made behind the scenes, getting J.J., you know, getting Garrett Blount, you know, Torrey Smith, Alshon Jeffrey, Chris Long. The list goes on and on. But... As upper management, you have given this man the job to make what you've put in place work. You've given this man the duty of putting the puzzle pieces together. That was a, that's his responsibility. But how can someone do that where you're constantly trying to hold their hand? How can someone do the job that you've tasked them to do? when you're consistently trying to micromanage them. And those are the reports that are out right now. And those are essentially the reports that we've already known. We've known that Howard Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie have micromanaged the hell out of this organization, micromanaged the hell out of Doug Peterson and how he's treated this roster and how he's made decisions on game day, in game, so on and so forth. There are reports coming out recently by way of The Athletic indicating that Doug Peterson was ridiculed and criticized for every decision. And that's one source, according to The Athletic. They say, if he won by three, it wasn't enough. If he lost on the last second field goal, you're the worst coach in history. And Peterson was reportedly forced to sit down with the owner, Jeffrey Lorry, and general manager, Howard Roseman, every Tuesday, in which his decision-making was regularly questioned and criticized. Now, I understand, Jeffrey Lurie, you want your team to be the best in the NFL. You want a top five offense. I get all of that, right? Harry Roseman, your job, in my humble opinion, is always on the clock because you make questionable decision after questionable decision. But the reason you're still here, the reason you're so well protected is because you have shielded yourself. You've aligned yourself so well with the owner he looks at you like a second son, like a third son. I don't know how many kids Jeffrey Lurie has, but he looks at you like a son. But you guys continuously made it a point to micromanage Doug Peterson. Now, I will say this as well. I question Doug Peterson's decision making at times. But there's reason to believe that this man made a lot of mistakes in game, a lot of in-game decision mistakes because he was so 
hell-bent on trying to make the right decision so upper management wouldn't crucify him. You can't have so much pressure on you to the point where the pipes burst. Micromanaging someone in any role does not lead you to success. Now, they do say if you want something done right, do it yourself. But the last time I checked, Howie Roseman wasn't a head coach. Jeffrey Lurie wasn't a head coach. Neither of those guys are natural bred football guys, as a matter of fact. How, Howie Roseman is a lawyer, you know, a numbers guy. Jeffrey Lurie, he's a, or was rather, a big time film producer. A big time investor in film, movies. So, where is the football acumen then? You see, football is a sport, or the NFL rather, is a league where you have your organizations and there are tiers, there are levels. People have roles in order for everything to flow. But when you're trying to micromanage the one guy in the building that knows football, how can you ever be successful? And I understand Frank Reich may be the main reason why we won that Super Bowl with his scheme and so on and so forth. But Doug Peterson has something. He had the post at one point of that locker room. He had the post of this team. And time and time again, it showed that he wasn't as powerful as the team thought he was. Time and time again, he was being questioned by upper management, which then leads to your subordinates, Doug Peterson, to question you, your players to question you. How much control do you really have? And then it leads to guys like Carson Wentz jumping Doug Peterson, jumping Howard Roseman to get to the owner to, to air his concerns. You see, there's no cohesiveness. There's no chain of command or following thereof. With this new coaching staff, I'll be damned if Howard Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie Michael Maddox is young guy. I'll be damned. This new coaching staff is young. This new coaching staff has so much to offer. And I'll be damned if they become handcuffed by the likes of Howard Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie, because they're so concerned about ego and pride and you know who's responsible for success. The bottom line is you're only as good as the people you put in place. You're only as good as the people you put in power. Trust is something that's so important when it comes to this, this type of thing. You have to trust the guys that you've hired. Otherwise, why do you hire them? You have to let things fall where they may. Howard Roseman as the GM. It's your job to secure the roster and give the team the pieces they need to be successful. Jeffrey Lurie, it's your job to cut the check. It's just that simple. Stay in your lane. Nick Sirianni has a lot to offer to his team. And if this team is to ever bounce back, Jeffrey Lurie and Howard Roseman must back off and they must do their jobs accordingly. Howard Roseman, stick to what you know. Securing contracts, you know, moving numbers here and there, convincing guys to come play for you on those one-year prove-it deals. I will give you that kind of respect. But when it comes to drafting talent, when it comes to eyeing talent, knowing football, knowing the game, knowing who's going to be successful, trust and believe that's not you. And that's okay. A beautiful trait in business is knowing what you are and what you're not. A beautiful trait in business is knowing when to delegate duties. Knowing when to put someone in a certain position to secure a certain task. When you know that's not your strong suit. Like I said, you're only as good as the team you put in place. But I'll leave it at that. I'm your humble host, Tony DeShields II. And you guys have been tuning into your dose of chalk it up. Where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And please go check out the Chalk It Up merch shop as well. So many items. The links are available down below in the description. One love and fly goes fly.